Hello and welcome everyone to our video course on Altrex for Beginners. In some of our previous videos, we have seen the transition from Excel to Power Query, and this time we are going to take a project into Altrex. Just to do a quick recap, these are some of the files we were working with in our previous exercises. We have three different files with sales transactions, and a fourth one can be added later. Similarly, we have other information pieces in other files, such as the business segment discount policy. Our objective will be to create an output file which will look like this. It consists of U.S. sales till date for the four business segments. This is accessories, bikes, clothing, and components. And we will want to add the count of transactions during this period. Now remember, if a new file gets added into the folder, that should also get updated in our output data file. So let's begin our journey. This is how the Altrix interface will look. After finishing the workflow, you'll see many tool icons in the canvas area. It starts with input and then ends with an output. So I'm going to start afresh with a new canvas area. You can do so by pressing Control N, N for new. The first thing I do, I go to in out and I look for something called input data. Now, if you do not remember which tool to use and where it is, you can also type in just the first few letters of the tool and you'll get a long list. From there, you can drag and drop and begin your task. So this input data is meant to collect the raw data sources. So I click on the configuration panels button. I go to the file. Then I point to a folder which is called sales. From there, I choose one of the three files for 2016. I press open. It asks me which sheet. By default, it's sheet one, so again, I press OK. Next, what you see is a preview of the first 100 records from the file. Now, just like macros, we would want to run this workflow and see what happens. To do so, you can either click on the Run button or you can press Ctrl-R. As you press Control R in the results window, you'll see what actions have been taken from this message window and the output preview. Next, my objective was to combine multiple files from this folder, right? So I'm going to place asterisk sign in the place of the file name. Remember, it's asterisk.xlsx. So I'm not forgetting the extension part of it. Now, before I press Control R, I do have a quick look at the number of records from the current file, almost 15 and a half thousand. So when I press Control R to run the workflow, I would be interested in knowing what is the final number of records that I get. Yes, it is 60,919, which means more data sets have been combined into this preview window. Next, if you want to look at the data's quality, which means null values, blank values, you'll need a tool called Browse. You'll find it under the Favorites category. You can drag and drop, or else you can select the tool of Input and press Shift-B, B for Browse. Instantly, another instance of the Browse tool comes up, at which point you can press Control-R to run it. Now, as the data gets processed, you'll see the profile of the data. Let me quickly show an overview of how the data ultimately will look in the configuration window. Example number one. You would see this panel, which talks about null values, empty values, OK, and some basic graphs showing count or uniqueness of the value. Example number two. With a different data set, you might see things like these. So in short, browse tool can be used to look at the data's quality. It has no output anchor, and that's why I call it a dead end. Generally, I keep this at the top. So right now, this is one input tool which has gathered data from three files put together. Next, I bring in another input data tool, and this time this will be used to fetch the business segment data. I click on the dropdown in the configuration panel. I go to File, and I'm careful to choose the right file, which is none other than Business Segment. I click on Open. Just like the last time, I chose the right sheet and I press OK. What you see on the left-hand side is a panel with a preview of the first 100 records. 
Of course, there are many empty cells as you had seen in the previous videos. The question is how do I fill this up? To do so, I go to the search box and type a word called multi. Amongst the many options that I get, I get multi-role formula. I drag and drop and connect this. Now looking at the preview of the records, what I want if the active cell is empty should take the value from above it and it should continue till the last null values. The minute the data point, which is represented by a cell in Excel, is not empty, it should continue with the same value. So I go to the multi-role formula tool and then I begin writing the expression. But before doing that, I choose this option which says update existing field. Which field? The column of business segment that contains multiple null values. For now, I ignore this part and move on to this section which is called variables. So variable is something that I'll be using under my if statement. So IIF, now you might be wondering, how do I learn the functions? Well, you can go to the functions tab and look at conditional options and you'll see many options within that. Furthermore, I can scroll down and look at the test option within which I will also find something called is empty. So I'm going to write is empty, then I go to variables. Then I choose from the second drop down the active row of the business segment. If that is empty, what needs to be done? It should take the value from the row above, and that's what I'll do. Row minus one indicates one row above. I double click, so if the current cell value is not empty, then it should take the existing value, which is row plus zero, the same row, and the business segment. Closing the parentheses, and once done, I'm going to press Control R. Let the workflow run, and what you'll see in the preview window is all the business segment values have been filled in correctly. Now, isn't that great? This is very similar to what you saw in Excel in the form of go to special and control enter, and in Power Query, filled down. I also see there are 33 records displayed in this current file. Of course, you can press Control Shift B to have a look at it through the Browse tool. Now, let me go back to the first file, which is a combination of the three files. I may not want all the columns to be processed in the next step, so I use something called Select. Now, Select tool, I drag and drop, and it becomes the next step for the first input data tool. Now, what Select does is something very simple but very important, which is it ensures that the right data type has been assigned to each column. If you want to rearrange the sequence, you can use the up and down arrow. If you do not want any columns to be taken to the next step, you can untick them. And this is useful when you have hundreds of columns of data which you do not want to take to the next step. After this step, I want to add another column to this data which is called business segment. Currently, it doesn't have one. So, just like VLOOKUP in Excel or Merge Queries in Power Query, I will go to something called Join. Within that, there's a tool which I just click once to get a help icon, and this will give you an idea of what it is meant for. For now, I drag and drop to the right-hand side, and you will see that there are two input anchors. L means the left table, R means the right table. So I'm going to make sure the output of the second input data tool ultimately flows down to the R of the join tool. So in short, I'm trying to connect the two data sets. Now before I do that, I must configure this join tool correctly. Can you tell me what is the common thing between the first and second data set? Yes, the segment category. So I'm going to the configuration panel and choose the segment category from both the data fields. And once that is done, I'm going to press Control R. Now, to see the result, I click on the Join tool, and you'll notice there are three options in the output anchor, L, J, and R. L represents this type of join, J represents this one, and R represents this one. Now, in this case, the categories are one field which are common to both the data. So I wish to know the output of J. 
So, one option to look at the output is to press Control Shift B. It will give browse to all the three different types of output. For now, I click on this first browse tool and delete, and also the last one and delete. Let me run the tool once, Control R, and then I click on the browse tool. It tells me 60,919 records. And towards the last column, you would notice segment category in business segment. Both the data have been combined. Now, of course, you might say, I do not want the segment category column, which is nothing but a repetition of the category column from the previous table. So therefore, I bring browse to the top. It's a dead end. And then I choose something called select. Just like the last time I drag and drop, connect to the J output of the join tool. I press control R to run it. And this select will allow me to untick some of the boxes which I don't want, such as segment category. Once done, I press Control R. Once the workflow has been executed, I will be keen to look at the output of this select tool. Towards the end, I don't see any category segment column which was getting repeated again. Now I go to the search box and I type in filter. I bring out the filter tool and drag and drop. Connect to the output anchor of the previous step. So here is where I'm going to configure the filter. I go to the region option. Why? Because I want only those records which originated from the United States. So in the equals box, I write United States. Automatically, the function has been posted out here. You can also click on custom filter and click on new functions on your own. For now, I'm going to press Control R. Once this project has been executed, I would be keen to know in the T, what kind of records do I hold? Does it hold all the 60,000 plus records? No, it just holds those records, which are the 38,809 belonging to only the United States. However, the F representing false indicates all the other transactions besides the United States. Now I want to summarize the transactions of the true output. So either you can go to search box and find out summarize, or you can go to favorites icon and bring summarize. Now, once I am on summarize, it gives me all the fields and also gives me the drop down to conduct an action. The first thing I do is to choose the business segment. I will say group the business segment so that they are summarized into four categories, accessories, bikes, clothing, and components. The next action I choose is of gross sales, and then I choose the mathematical operation, sum. Once again, I go to the drop down, and this time I choose count. Now let me see what happens if I control R and run the workflow. I may click on the output anchor, and once I do, I see the results coming up. This belongs to U.S. sales in 2016, 2017, and 2018, the four business segments. So after getting the summarized information on the USA's four segments to date for the year 2016, 2017, and 2018, I would want this output to be stored in a CSV file. So I get hold of the tool called Output Data. I bring it along to the canvas and connect to the output anchor of Summarize. Now I go to the configuration panel and choose the path where the file must be saved. So I give a dummy name. 3y and save, and then also choose the extension of the file .csv. Just to be double sure, I go to the file path and make sure this is also CSV. And once done, I press Control R. And if all worked fine, I will go to the folder where it's supposed to be saved and look at the output. I minimize my Alteryx window. I go to the folder. There you go. 3y.csv file. I double click and open, and I see all the numbers for the three years total combined. Now, what if in your three years sales data, in the main sales folder, you had three years, but I'm going to add one more year, and that belongs to 2019. If that new file is added in the sales folder, such that now you have four input files, let's see how your output will change. Remember the numbers. It's almost half a million dollars of sales for accessories. I'm going to close this. I'll go back to Alteryx. I look at the output, and I'm going to press Control-R again. Once this is run, I go to the output of Summarize, 
and notice this time there's a difference in sales items. In addition, in the input level, I do not have 60,000 plus rows. I have 80,000 plus rows. Now that's automation. Now remember one thing, the same output can be used to create multiple slices of the report. For example, if this is one report, I'll make sure I'll have another one which is connected to the true output of the filter. There you go. For now, I just press delete. Just to do a quick check of the output report, I click open 3Y sales, and it is no more half a million dollars. It is almost $1 million. So friends, we saw the results. Let's do a quick recap. We took the input tool, brought out the data from multiple files, and during the configuration panel, we had to use the asterisk sign to make sure all the files in that folder have been picked up. Control Shift B will invoke the Browse tool. It helps you look at the quality of data. Next, Select tool helps you rearrange the columns and specify the data type and even allows you the facility to untick the columns which you do not want to take over to the next step. By the time we reach here, simultaneously, we had also brought data from the business segment file. Then after we had used a multi-row formula field to write an expression that ensures all the blank values are filled in, then we use the output of both these steps to join them such that there is one consolidated output which will reflect the business segment per transaction. Then again, we use select to ensure some columns are not used. Then after a filter to take up only the United States data. And the filter allows you to have two outputs, true and false. The true anchor reflects that data which meets the criteria that is of the United States. From there, we summarize the data so that we get sales per the four segments. That is, accessories, bikes, clothing, and components. And finally, getting the output into a CSV file. So those were the files we had used. And now we have a brief idea of why Alteryx. With this, I'll sign off and see you in the next program. Alteryx for Beginners.